In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to create this intro title animation and talk about some conceptual thoughts behind it. Hi, my name is Manuel. I'm a freelance motion designer, bringing you fresh animation and motion graphics tutorials every week. The basic idea for this intro is to do something with text and cursor. <laughs> I know it's been done a million times, but we'll do it in a unique way. That being said, let's begin with the end of the title animation. First, we grab the type tool and write whatever your title is. I use an Adobe font called Josephine Sans Bold. Alignment right, size 64, tracking 100. Let's center this text with the alignment tool. Next, with no solid selected, let's double click on the rectangle tool to create a new shape. Then we open the rectangle property and set the size to 50 by 50 pixels. Change the fill color into yellow and name it square. Next, we position it on the right. We want the final title reveal to start at 54 frames. Let's animate the reveal. We set a keyframe for the position at 66 frames, then move to 54 frames and move the left corner of the title to the center of the screen. We use the title and action save for better orientation. Next, we animate the position of the square, set a position keyframe at 66 frames, then go to 54 frames and move the square to the center on top of the first letter. Then we add an animator for the opacity of the text. Set the opacity to zero and set a keyframe for the start in the range selector property. Then we move to 66 frames and set the value to 100. Having the three right keyframes selected, we quickly open the graph editor, make sure the snap icon is activated and edit speed graph is selected and smooth out the ending of the three animations. Check in. Seems like the square reveals the text exactly what we want. Now we need the square to blink like an actual cursor. Therefore we add strobe light. We want the strobe period to be 0.4 seconds and the strobe duration half that amount, 0.2 seconds. And we want the strobe to make the layer transparent. Let's have a look. Awesome ending! Now, let's squeeze the structure and concept out of that. So we have the square cursor and text. We stick to these two elements. The text moves to the left, the cursor moves to the right. We stick to these directions. The cursor is visible for 6 frames, then disappears for 6 frames. That defines our rhythm. If your comp is based on 25 frames, it's a 5 frame rhythm by the way. Generally, less is more. Adding lots of different effects and elements often looks cheesy. As the cursor reveals the title in the end, it should start the intro as well. Therefore, we duplicate the square solid, get rid of the position keyframes, move the layer to the beginning and split it at 24 frames. That's 4 times 6 frames. Next we use the second part of the solid, get rid of the strobe effect and change the square size to 685 pixels. Then we set a keyframe for the position at 24 frames and then go to 35 frames and move it to the right out of the screen. And split the layer again at 36 frames. Shift Command D. Next we duplicate our text layer and move it below the square shape. Get rid of the position keyframes. Scale it up quite a bit so that the first letter is still completely hidden by the square. Now we set a new keyframe for the position at 24 frames and at 35 frames move the title to the left. Maybe this far. Next we ease the beginning of the animation in the graph editor. Let's split the text layer at 36 frames as well. Important is that the speed of the animation fits to the end, which we already animated. Looks good for me. Now we need to adjust the range here, so that the text is reviewed by the cursor. A little adjustment. With just two elements, you have to be really exact. Let's have another look. Awesome. We jump to 48 frames 
split the two layers again. Set the size of the square to 1080 pixels and move it to the left corner of the screen. Set a position keyframe, move to 53 frames and move it to the other side of the screen. Next, we double click on the text layer and type in one letter out of our text. I chose an N. Scale it way up. Hide it behind the square and set a position keyframe. At 53 frames, we move it to the left, halfway out of the screen. Finally, the last part. Let's do something a bit different here. The cursor erases parts of the type. We scale down the square to 25%. Move it to the left side of the screen. Set a position keyframe at 36 frames, then go to 47 frames and move it to the center of the screen. Then we scale down the text layer to around half the size. Move it to the right of the square, and this time I just use the second word of my title. Animation. Set a position keyframe, and then at 47 frames we move the text to the left. Again, the speed should feel the same as in the other parts. With both position keyframes selected, we move the text up a little to center it. Finally, we duplicate the square solid. Open the path property of the lower one, change it into a BC path and drag the two left points to the left, out of the screen. And we change the fill to white. This is the alpha invert mat for the text layer. In this video I've talked a bit more about my thoughts behind the actual animations. If you like these kinds of videos, let me know in the comments below. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. See you there in a moment. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and ring the bell if you want to know exactly when the next video is coming out. Thanks so much for watching. Hope that tutorial was helpful. See you in the next video. Bye!